Good evening. Welcome to our second community meeting for the Union Square Plaza and Streetscape project. Um, my name is Courtney Kirk. I am a senior planner in the Public Space and Urban Forestry Division for the City of Somerville and co-project manager of this project. Um, I am a Ward 3 resident, Somerville resident, uh, love all things Union Square. I'm really excited to have you all here tonight. Um, this meeting uh, is an opportunity for us to facilitate a shared space of learning. Um, so this project team will be sharing some ideas with you and facilitating a conversation about some of these ideas that uh, we have been working very hard on. Next slide. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this public meeting will be conducted via, via remote participation. We will post an audio recording, audio video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of these proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the City of Somerville's website and local cable access government channels. Um, so just some clarification, this meeting, we will be having um, some breakout rooms where we will be using a tool called a Jamboard to capture some ideas, feedback, concerns. Um, and we will be recording those sessions, the breakout rooms, but they will uh, not be made public. Um, they will be for note-taking purposes only. So, you know, this, this meeting is one component of a collective of outreach and community engagement around this project. Um, so we are happy to hear your input. And with that being said, I would like to welcome Mayor Katiana Ballantyne to uh, say a few words for you. Mayor, I believe that you are still muted. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. So it's nice to see you. I'm thrilled to welcome everyone to this meeting and to discuss the future of Union Square. It's especially fitting that this meeting is happening today, the day that the Green Line Extension Station opened in Union Square. With the arrival of the T and the ongoing development in Union Square, the neighborhood is facing some exciting changes. But we want to make sure that as the square evolves, it works for everyone. I've been impressed that this project has had such an inclusive and diverse outreach through the resident-led community design team, and that there's been a focus on reaching folks who usually do not attend these public meetings. It's important to hear, for me to hear all those voices, especially at a time of great transformation in Union Square. I look forward to a good conversation today about the design ideas and that you will continue to hear and respect each other's voices as we create a new future together. I'm excited about the ongoing process and discussions and I look forward to working together on having Union Square that meets the diverse needs of our community. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ewan Campen, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Courtney. Th thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I, I honestly just just want to hear uh, from everyone, so I, I'll just welcome everybody um, and just say, uh, as opposed to the picture on the screen, I'm not always that shiny with my eyes closed. Um, I look forward to to hearing from all of you today. Councillor Scott. Ditto. I hope it doesn't disconcert anybody that my hair is not green anymore. But uh, no, I'm, I'm very excited to see the plans and, and really anxious to hear from everybody tonight. So I'm just glad for everybody coming out and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Um, so tonight, uh, we're going to quickly go through some introductions and overview. 
and then hand it over to the consulting design team who is going to show a few design ideas around um, some of the major public spaces in Union Square. Then we will be having breakout rooms. Um, this is the part where um, if you're participating, um, hopefully you'll be able to um, ha connect with this Jamboard and we'll make some stickies and have a, a more int intimate conversation about some of the design ideas that you'll see tonight. Um, we'll then report back to the whole group um, and then we'll talk about some of the outreach that will be ongoing over the next two months um, and close it out with uh, next steps for this project. Next slide. So this team, um, we have a lot, we have a very big team um, that's composed of city staff and it's not just uh, Luisa Oliveira Viola Augustine and myself, we, we do have representation from all divisions and departments that are helping out with this project. Um, and we all have various backgrounds and our consulting team comes from various backgrounds. So we have transportation planning with tool design, landscape architecture from Clotford Martin Design Group, community engagement specialists, DS4SI and engineers at Kleinfelder. And we also have our uh, community design team, our resident experts that have been um, going through this process um, since we started this project um, to help us understand uh, the real uh, Somerville perspective, the real Union Square users perspective, and also help us to um, connect with people that we don't normally see at meetings like this. Um, so that we can ensure that we're hearing from a very diverse group of Union Square users and residents. Next slide. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Luisa Oliveira. Thank you, Courtney, and welcome everyone. Uh, just to echo what folks have said today, this is a time of very big transformation in Union Square. Um, if anyone took the tea, you can see how much just being just taking a ride from and to Union Square is going to change that square. Uh, in the last month or two, buildings have popped up uh, seemingly out of nowhere, but we've been having this conversation for a very long time. And um, so understanding that the future of Union Square is changing so rapidly, um, we really wanted to spend a lot of extra time on this project, touching, uh, talking to the residents of Union Square today and making sure that the users that we see on the plaza, which are diverse in many, many different ways, have a voice in this process. So some of the um, engagement that we've had has been very different from what we normally are doing in this type of public meeting, especially pre-pandemic, where folks would come. And that is intentional because there are many people who don't have the type of agency required to come to a public meeting, raise their hand and speak. And so, as Courtney mentioned, the community design team, which is made up of members of the community from many different backgrounds, speaking many different languages, have put in, been working for a year to hear um, voices and specifically the voices that are usually not heard. So we will review some of what we heard in the first meeting from, from what they heard. Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time just giving you a framework for the kind of conversation that we're having today. Union Square, according, we'll get into the details of the subject of the project area, but we're, there are really two focus areas, the plaza and Bow Street. And we're really looking at two ideas for these two focus areas. And what we want to have today is conversations about these ideas so that we have an understanding of the direction that we should continue to um, De, uh, design in. So, and this, what I'm saying will become a little bit more clear after the presentation, but um, nothing is going to happen in a month. We have, a, a, we're still going to, after this meeting, continue the engagement through the community design team and other mechanisms and through focus groups, but we really are looking for, to hear from you, the direction that we should be going in. 
And with that, I'm going to thank you again for coming tonight and hand it back over to Courtney. Actually handing it back to me, Viola Augustin. I'm the um, Senior Planner Mobility and I'm the co-project manager for this um, exciting project. And I wanted to step back and for people who have not been at the last community meeting and don't know that much about the project to introduce the um, scope of the project. And you see that on this map that is on the slide. Um, it's a little hard to read, but the um, dotted red line is the outline of all the areas that it includes. So it's not only the plaza, but surrounding streets. And that includes Somerville Avenue from Bow Street um, to uh, Webster, well, to Prospect, and then uh, Bow Street. It includes um, part of Washington Street, uh, Webster, all the way to Prospect, and then Prospect between Webster and um, Somerville Ave, and then some of the first blocks of the uh, surrounding neighborhood streets like Walnut and Stone Ave. We started this project in December 2019, uh, working with our consultant team, and the overall process, um, as Luis had, Luisa already mentioned, is to develop a few ideas for the plaza and the surrounding streets. And then at one point we have to decide on one idea direction and that is scheduled to be finished this fall. So it's really in the first, um, this is the first phase of the project and after that a lot more design details will follow. We also last summer had our first round of outreach and a public meeting and it ended with a public meeting last um, October. And for anybody who could not attend, you will find that on our webpage, which is bit.ly union sq redesign. So you can go there and find all the recording slides and other information. And at that public meeting, we covered the results of the summer community outreach, as well started to um, introduce some of the ideas for um, Somerville Avenue, Bow Street, the intersection of Bow Street and Summer Street. And, um, and started to talk about what could happen with the plaza. Um, sorry, next slide. So as Mayor Valentine mentioned, today was a big day. Um, the Union Square um, Green Line Station opened and I think most of us probably were there today and hopefully took a first ride and if not today, um, in the next coming days. It's pretty exciting. It's, um, yeah, I, as some of you might know, I've been working on this project for a long time and um, don't really know what to say, seeing the tra green line trains going. Uh, next slide. But the Green Line Station was one, is, is, as everybody mentioned, is a transformational um, addition to the square. The, um, the project that we're engaging right now was based on the Union Square Neighborhood Plan, which was adapt, adopted in 2016, and then included planning for this new op newly opened Union Square station, i.e. In included transit-oriented development, and that's compact, dense, vibrant urban environment near transit stations. All the new buildings being designed, and some of them already constructed, as we saw by the developer US2, and this project, are part of implementing the neighborhood plan. And as such, the design must support a mode shift to prioritizing pedestrians, then transit followed by riding bicycles and driving cars. And the project must plan for new residents, new workers, and new visitors. And as Louisa already mentioned, the design process <clears throat> must be inclusive and we must listen to the community. And Courtney will speak next to that. Next slide, please. So as we're thinking about the future of Union Square, we cannot forget the people that are already in the square. Um, it's, I think, what has made Union Square such a unique community in Somerville is that it's very diverse. There's a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different uses in Union Square that we really want to um, keep in place and uh, foster the ability for the people that are already here to still remain comfortable being part of the public realm 
um, in the future of Union Square. And the community design team, they've been a really great, um, we sort of, we've talked in, in our team that we're sort of like three pillars. We have uh, the city staff as one pillar, the design consultants as one pillar, and the community design team as another pillar where we're all coming from different perspectives. Um, we're all influenced by different things, um, but our shared conversation around the redevelopment and um, bringing this new infrastructure into Union Square, um, it's, it's a very important process that, you know, we can hear from the community design team who's able to connect with uh, the people that we don't normally hear from in Union Square and we can include um, the different voices in the design process that we are going through. So we've really thought about um, that the community is our client. It's not just the city being the client, um, but that it's, it's really important for us to change these modes of thinking um, as we approach the design um, and planning for Union Square. Next slide. So over the summer, the community design team held a whole bunch of different pop-ups and focus groups and sessions with um, different people like teen empowerment to hear a lot of different perspectives. Um, one thing that was a tool, two tools that we were able to um, collect some quantitative data is that we did this magnet board session and we did surveys. And across those two components, um, there were a lot of common themes. And so what we heard from people is that they really want more public art, more trees, green storm water and planters, and more seating in the square. And these are baseline design ideas that will be incorporated into all design approaches for um, all of Union Square. Uh, next slide. So um, the, this is an example of one of the pop-ups or two of the pop-ups that the CDT did in front of Market Basket and at the Summer Streets event, specifically around Bow Street. And we heard that um, people were really excited about turning Bow Street into a pedestrian only zone. Um, or a shared street. And it was exciting to hear that, you know, there were a lot of people thinking about how it is proactive in terms of making the street safer. Um, and also, you know, when we have these opportunities to get community feedback, you know, we hear you. We hear you when you talk about um, the businesses that you love um, or, you're someone who has a driveway on one of these streets, we are hearing this information. And that's part of the reason why we are taking a very long time to collect a lot of voices, because we really wanna make sure that we're hearing from everyone. Next slide. So, um, as we continue to work with the community design team and our design consultants, um, we're really looking at every street and public space within these, these dashed lines. Um, and we recognize that the design ideas, when you introduce one component in one place, it does have an impact on um, the, the pedestrians or the cars or the buses in another location. So, we are really trying to work through some of these bigger ideas at this time so that they can collectively work as a whole um, across all of the streets and public spaces in the Union Square neighborhood. Next slide. So for tonight, as I said, we're really going to be focusing on two areas, Bow Street and the Union Square Plaza. And each area is going to share, we're going to share two ideas. Um, these are ideas at this moment. This meeting is not, please don't take this as a meeting where whatever you say, you feel like you, you're voting one way or another. Um, this is an opportunity to share, share concerns. It's an opportunity to share excitement. Um, it's an opportunity to have a conversation. Um, 
this is this is just one component, as I said earlier, to our collective community outreach. Um, so don't feel like, you know, you have to, if you don't talk tonight, we're not going to hear from you. Um, we're always available and we will be having lots of more pop-ups and other opportunities over the next two months. Um, but we really wanted, we recognize that, you know, during the pandemic, um, we, we're able to reach so many more people um, on this type of platform than if we had an in-person meeting. So we recognize this as one tool in our um, community outreach strategy to hear from people, hear from the neighbors, hear from Union Square residents. Um, so we are excited to have you be part of this meeting tonight. And I'm going to turn the meeting over to our design consultants. Courtney, thank you. Good evening, everybody. And I was thinking, what a perfect way to celebrate the beginning of spring with an extension of the green line. So um, I can't wait to ride it. And um, it's an exciting day uh, for sure. So we're going to dive in here. I'm going to talk um, again. I'm Kaki Martin with the Club for Martin Design Group. We are the landscape architect consultants on the team. And we are going to start in with showing you some of these um, ideas uh, for um, that we'll, then we'll go into the breakout groups to talk and answer questions about. But first, I want to just sort of remind everybody, you all know Union Square well, and, and just to sort of have everybody recall really how much pedestrian space, how much space is allocated toward pedestrians in the heart of Union Square right now. And this is a drawing you can see kind of hopefully register with street names and also the sort of reddish brown building there um, that's standing out is as a sort of landmark is the existing fire, or excuse me, the old fire station building. And that kind of purpley blue color you see is really Alec, is really showing you that's all the places where pedestrians can, can be. Everywhere else, uh, you know, are where cars um, have access. So that's the current condition for pedestrian um, experience in Union Square. And if we go to the next slide, which, which Courtney already showed you, but we're showing that same color tone, we're showing you all the places where there's the potential actually to be primarily a pedestrian zone. So that's a significant change from the existing condition. So um, that's sort of the broad big picture that no matter what, any of these ideas expand this, this kind of realm of the, of the pedestrian um, and make walkable space in a way that you, currently does not exist in Union Square. So if we go to the next, um, we're going to talk about the plaza space first. And again, to orient you, um, we're now kind of made a different view. You see the building there in the upper right is the fire station. So you can see Somerville Avenue in the sort of more of the foreground. Um, so we're sort of more looking toward the east in this view. And again, the existing condition, we know there are some trees out um, on the plaza. There's actually quite a bit that doesn't have shade. We've heard a lot about that. And the parking lot, you know, takes up a significant um, amount of space actually. And you can see that there with the, with the cars. Somerville Avenue has two-way traffic on it and is, you know, quite a busy street. So that's the current condition. So before I show you the two ideas, I want to just clarify, um, and we'll talk about this in the breakout groups as well, but just that there are similarities between these two ideas that I'm about to present. One similarity is that in both cases, the plaza size has is increased. So in both cases, the plaza increases in size. In both cases, all current and future events and gatherings can occur. There's no difference in, in what can occur there. Um, there might be differences in how they get laid out, but they can all occur. Art, um, public art can be included in both ideas. Groves of trees, shade structures can also be included. There'll be, there's plenty of room for furniture, both movable and fixed furniture can be included. And then lastly, um, another, another um, kind of piece of feedback that we heard is that in both cases, green infrastructure to manage stormwater and planting can happen in both scenarios. 
So I'm going to first show you Plaza Idea 1. So in Plaza Idea 1, so again, just to orient you, you can see the um, firehouse building to, to orient you. In Plaza Idea 1, Somerville Avenue keeps two-way traffic on it. There is a uh, dedicated separated bike lane. And um, there is, we're showing here sort of a shade structure. We're not getting into the specifics, but you can see in this sort of purple blue tone, all the area that is, that is um, available for pedestrians. And you can also see a strategy about the parking lot. And I'll get into that, that sort of modifies the existing parking lot. So if we go, I want to show you images, what it means to, what it feels like on the ground. So again, this is a view looking east. You can note the tower of the firehouse there, which will help orient you to these kind of future looking views. So this is the existing condition as you know it now. And if we go to the next slide, we see the future here. The existing curb line, that black dashed line, is showing where the curb line currently exists. So that means that, for example, the young man pushing the stroller is currently, um, would, would be in the future in new plaza space, but currently that is in the, in the roadway. So it gives you a sense about the expansion here on, on Plaza Idea 1. The separated bike lane you can see there also in that view and the and two-way traffic. So the bike lane separates the plaza space from the two-way traffic in this scenario. And then we have a second view um, from, so the other direction. So now we have the firehouse um, is on the right, the red brick there on the right, the existing condition with again, two-way traffic. And if we look at the plaza this way, we see the, two, the separated bike lane here on what is the south side. And we can see that things have sort of tightened up uh, the bike separated bike lanes kind of um, buffer the, the plaza there beyond. So if we go to plaza idea, um, oh, sorry, forgot, sorry, the parking lot, which I already mentioned. So here's an existing view of the parking lot. We know that, that in the pandemic, it's really the um, restaurants have been able to take advantage of part of the parking lot for outdoor dining, which has been great. And in a lot of ways, this idea sort of carries that forward. So if we go to the proposed here idea of parking lot idea one, there is parking that remains sort of head in toward the fire, uh, fire station building. On the right-hand side, more space, whoops. Um, Did the, there we go. Um, on the right-hand side, the, um, those parking spaces are sort of are removed and that gets completely expanded to be more plaza space um, and, and dining and spill out. So this sort of limits the amount of um, parking in this lot in idea one. In plaza idea two, this is really an idea about pulling the plaza from, from the north side all the way across to the, to the south side of the street. So that you can see that purple tone carries all the way through. You see a striped, stripe runs right through it. And in this case, the cars are removed from this block of Somerville Avenue. The only vehicular traffic that will move through Somerville Avenue in Plaza Idea 2 is bus traffic. The separated bike lanes are not part of the scheme. Bike um, cyclists would share the same space as the buses so that um, bikes and buses are sort of in the same space and everything else is really pedestrian focused. It also means that pedestrians can cross the block mid block. Uh, folks will not have to navigate up to um, uh, cross, street crossings and crosswalks in the way that they currently do now. So if we again look at this scheme on the ground as if we're walking through the plaza. So this is the same view we showed you before. So again, registering the tower of the fire department building, fire station, excuse me. 
And we can see that that purple blue has moved further right on this on the um, page here. The existing curb line is that dark dashed line that you see in there again. And you can see the buses beyond and the bikes sharing that central space. And if we look at the view from the other side, Uh, so we have two-way bus traffic here, and cyclists um, sort of are just separated out towards at the ends of the road of the block, but are mostly riding in the same um, lane with the buses. Um, planters, furnishings, shade trees, shade structures, all of those things between the two options are both possible, um, but there's a dramatic change in how much traffic moves through the center of the space for that block of Somerville Avenue. And the parking idea associated with Plaza Idea 2 is, um, if we go to the next slide, is really to remove vehicles from the space entirely, except for emergency. There would always be access for emergency, but it really means that in the day today, there would not be any sort of personal vehicular parking um, in that space and it really gets completely turned over to uh, pedestrians and plaza space, outdoor dining, etc. So these are the two ideas again. Um, I think we have the wrong graphic in here. We have a double graphic. Sorry, there's not a difference here. Whoops, that's a goof. So we'll have to get that fixed. Um, and um, Preston, I go. will, there you go. Um, I will turn it over to you to talk more about the particulars of the mobility aspects of the, of the differences of the plazas. Absolutely. Thank you, Kaki. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Preston. I'm an engineer with Tool Design Group, uh, the city's mobility consultant for this project. So you just saw two ideas to dramatically expand the plaza and a big part of these ideas is reimagining Somerville Avenue. Um, what does a future Summer, Somerville Avenue look like? What does it sound like? How busy is it? And what kind of vehicles are on that street? All of these things are going to have a huge impact on the experience of actually being in the plaza. So tonight, I'd like to take you to, through two really exciting ideas for Somerville Ave as it goes through the plaza. We'll look at some example pictures to help everyone kind of get a sense for what Somerville Ave could feel like, both for, for people moving through the area as well as people lingering in the plaza. Uh, please keep in mind that we're focusing on how space is used, things like specific kinds of trees or streetlights, pavement materials, pieces of art, seating. Those are all included in this project as Viola and Courtney mentioned earlier, but we're not there yet in the process. Right now we're focused on what kind of transportation pieces fit into this part of the plaza. So if we go to the next slide, um, our first big idea uh, is to continue the great work that was recently done on Somerville Avenue. Um, this is something that uh, Tool in the City worked on recently and we know a lot of people are really excited about. Uh, as a refresher, uh, the new Somerville Avenue is a street with, with wide sidewalks, uh, with raised and well-marked crosswalks, with safe bike facilities, uh, with lots of plantings and trees and some really nice street lighting. Um, and so in this idea, uh, we would carry that forward. Uh, car traffic would continue to flow in much the same way as it does today. Um, so you get you know, some queued vehicles throughout the day uh, and you also get lighter traffic at night. Um, so that's kind of Somerville Ave in idea one. In idea two, um, it's something a little different. Uh, Somerville Ave would still have wide sidewalks, safe place to ride a bike, but it would become a busway. We think this is a really exciting idea because without the constant noise and visual impact of cars, the street could feel more like an extension of the plaza. Without car traffic, the street and the rest of the plaza are quieter both during the day and at night. And so on the screen right now, it is, a, is an example from 16th Street in Denver. This is a place where people can walk, people can bike, people can take the bus, 
but it's closed to car traffic. Uh, again, a lot of design choices have been made in this specific example, trees, lights, pavement, um, and we're not endorsing those elements for this project. The big idea is really how easy it becomes to cross the street at any point, to ride a bike anywhere, just feel like you're in the plaza. Um, so if we go to the next slide, since a busway changes how most people interact with the street, I'd like to show a quick video from Sevilla, Spain. As you watch the video, uh, I draw your attention to a couple of things. Where are people walking and biking? How do they interact with the space? What happens when an emergency vehicle or a transit vehicle shows up? What happens when there's no vehicle? So I'll give everyone just a little while to, to watch this quick video. All right, so I hope that gives everyone a, a sense of what we mean when we say we're thinking about a busway for the area. Um, we think it's a really exciting idea and has a lot of potential, um, but obviously so does continuing the Somerville Ave project that, that we all know and love. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand things back to Kaki um, to turn us back to some ideas that we also have for Bow Street. Thanks, Preston. So here we are on Bow Street. So again, another um, aerial view. Um, hopefully you can see Warren Ave, Somerville Ave, and Washington Street to orient you. Um, and we're using the same technique here where the purpley blue tone is what is currently allocated for pedestrians. Um, we know uh, cars park on both sides of the street um, and there's a bike lane down the middle. So this is the current condition of, of Bow Street and the amount of space allocated to pedestrians. And if we go to the sec next slide, the idea, um, whoops, um, idea one here uh, for Bow Street is that it really becomes entirely devoted to pedestrians. Cars are removed from this equation, this version of Bow Street. This would likely allow us to have a double row of trees on the north side of the street, which would actually help with a lot of the heat um, coming from the south and plenty of room for art and outdoor dining and um, any other sort of plaza amenities. And it would become a fully walkable space. So if we then look at the views um, on the ground, the existing Bow Street here is you, it's familiar to all of you, parking on both sides of the street, bike lane down the middle. And look at the sort of tower there. That's another place to register the view. And this is what it would feel like, ability to sort of move and walk across um, all of it, no vehicles. In this scenario, also anyone, any people with a bike would be uh, needing to walk their bikes in this um, scenario. And idea two for Bow Street is that it becomes shared. So again, the, using this idea of the, you can see the sort of striping, that cars would be allowed one way. So Warren and Walnut, um, cars would be able to come down those streets and get onto Bow. And we call this a shared condition. So it's sort of um, people are sharing it with some amount of car traffic, much in the way buses and bikes would be sharing in the second plaza condition. If we look at the same view on the ground, the existing and the proposed of the shared and how that might feel that again, so bikes would be able to be um, moving and any and, and other sort of personal movement vehicles, all these hovercraft and such, 
um, but room also still room for outdoor dining, some loading also um, is included in this scheme as well, but um, some one-way traffic and a shared condition for Bow Street. And I'm going to turn it back to Courtney, who will orient us to the breakout rooms. Thanks, Kaki. So as I opened up the meeting and um, let you all know that we're going to have a breakout room session, um, this is an opportunity for us to have conversation around the ideas that the design consulting team just shared with everyone. Um, we're going to be using a tool called Jamboard. And when we all get into our breakout rooms, we will give you all a link to a specific, our rooms Jamboard. Um, and each room will be facilitated um, by either a, a member of city staff or um, our design consulting team. And we will have um, co-facilitators taking notes. And we'll be working through um, a series of questions about the different views that we shared with you so we can hear your feedback. Um, next slide. Or there are a couple of slides before we go to the breakout room. Right. Just want to before we all uh, break out. Um, I just want to say that um, this is something that uh, you know we have thirty minutes to work through this. We're going to be spending time on the different uh, design ideas that were shared, um, and as a way to have a, a great conversation is to establish some group norms for our breakout rooms that all voices count, all opinions are valid. Uh, please give time for others to be heard. Uh, so keep your comments brief. Um, our meetings are a space of shared learning. Um, and this is a space to give um, technical, an, a way to explain technical terms um, and this is a place where you can feel free to ask if you need something defined or you need um, some, some points clarified. So I just, before we all uh, disperse, just wanted to, to get those uh, norms established. Um, we, uh, as I said, we have each room facilitated by either a member of the city of Somerville. So myself, Crystal B from DS4SI, Kaki Martin from Clawford Martin Design Group, Lori Lobenstein from DS4SI, Preston Brewer from Tool Design, Sharon Camaro from Clawford Martin Design Group, Viola Augustine from the City of Somerville, and Wendell Joseph from Tool Design. Um, and we are, quick thing, we are subbing. Um, Louisa is going oh, to yes. be running eight. That was my fault for not switching. All right. Yeah. Louisa Oliveira is in place of Wendell Joseph this evening. Um, so with that, um, looking forward to seeing whoever's in my breakout room. It'll take about 15 seconds and then uh, we'll start so we can take a short break. Welcome back. I feel like I was, I got zapped back to this room as I was trying to tell my breakout room. Um, that if you felt like you didn't have enough chance to um, let your voice be heard, uh, we are here in other capacities to hear from you. Um, and uh, please don't feel like if you didn't get a chance or maybe you had a technical fail or something, um, this is not the, the end all be all meeting. So. Uh, we, we welcome comments over the next two months. Um, so next slide. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes just to, to have a little report out from each break room or break room, breakout room. Yes, we're changing all of those words tonight. Um, so I just want to say 
that my group, um, I felt like they were, they asked some really good questions, um, specifically about uses like loading and parking and also had um, raised a lot of questions about um, accessibility and overall um, we're really excited to have some improvements and more pedestrian realm or public realm um, in the square uh, and more trees um, and I thought it was great a great opportunity to clarify some of their observations and how they use the square. Um, so I thank you. Um, thank you for, for breakout room one. And I'm going to hand it over to Crystal B and she'll let us know about her breakout room. Hey everyone. Um, so in breakout room two, uh, it was a really wonderful conversation. Um, there were some similar questions as to what Courtney was speaking about, um, about the placement of loading zones, about um, the exact way that traffic would be rerouted. Um, so really, really excellent questions. And then also um, a, a good deal of excitement around uh, the options and the ideas. Um, so thank you so much for, and also new ideas for how, how, to, how to convey these these ideas to other folks, um, like avatars. And so those were really exciting and I'm excited, excited to share it with the full team. And I'll pass it over to Kaki. Sorry, couldn't find my unmute. Um, team three, we had a great, we had a great group and it sounds like there's some common themes here. Um, across the group. So generally this excitement about increased pedestrian space and lots of really clear questions about, but how exactly does it work for the people who live nearby? How exactly, if I live on Prospect Hill, do I get there? How does local access work? And what are the implications on, on local access, both on the, on the Bow Street scenarios and on the, on the transit way for the plaza? Um, great comments about sort of encouraging, thinking about the future development potential on some of these additional of some of the sites and how they may be able to help support some bigger picture um, thinking, bigger moves for, for parking and um, liveliness. And I'd say there was on the parking lot was a lot of clarity on being really excited about um, the parking lot converting to to plaza space. That was um, that was great. So, thanks, Group Three. Hi, um, I want to say thank you to Group Four. Um, we had a really frank conversation. I feel like the um, thing that I heard loud and clear is that it was actually hard for folks to dig into these designs without knowing what would happen to the cars. There was a lot of questions and concerns. For the businesses, if there was a lot more traffic, there was a lot of desire, like just to know, like if this is realistic, where do the cars go? Uh, how could businesses, you know, some of the issues around loading and unloading, and would it be limited to certain times? What would it mean for Somerville Ave? Um, what would it mean for Bow Street? Um, generally, uh, uh, a lot of general enthusiasm for the the beautiful designs of of greater greater pedestrian space, uh, especially in the plaza, uh, more so than Bow Street. Um, but concerns about cars and concerns about the businesses uh, and questions of loading. And then one point that a couple of uh, folks shared, which is really, you think bikers are going to carry their bikes down Bow Street? That, that didn't seem realistic to a couple of our uh, participants. So thank you so much for sharing. I'll pass it on to Preston. Thank you, Lori. Um, I'll echo what Kaki said. A lot of similar themes showing up here uh, in group five. Uh, we start off with a lot of excitement about um, the kind of pedestrian uh, experience potential here, how, how focused on the pedestrians. It was um, excitement for safer streets and uh, then kind of turning towards thinking about how could, what, what do some of the, these ideas mean for connecting to adjacent neighborhoods? Are there ways to improve those connections? Um, and then, especially as we got to Bow Street, pivoting to that question of, what does it mean for the small businesses? You know, what what are some strategies for loading um, and those kinds of things? Um, so really great conversation. Thank you to everyone in group five. 
um, and I will pass it to Sharon. Thank you, Preston, and thank you, Group 6. Um, I would say we had a lively conversation along the lines of, um, it sounds similar to some of the others. Um, there was a discussion that the square is, what's important here is people and that people arrive in the square in many different ways and that they all need to be accommodated. So that is pedestrian, bikes, also cars and traffic that this area is part of um, a larger traffic pattern. And um, there were a lot of questions about how that actually works that um, we're not able to answer tonight um, in our limited time. Um, and then also about the businesses and how, um, you know, any design that happens here can support those uh, businesses in the square. And uh, I'll just add an important conversation about kind of the uh, sort of liveliness and when people are going to be in the square and how um, the future development um, is quite a bit of it is office space and so might not bring the level of activity um, that's shown in the in the um, images on the weekend. And I will pass it to Viola. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you, Group 7. Um, again, a lot of what we've already heard. Um, the group was um, had sort of a multimodal background. Then, and you could hear that uh, reflect in the discussion. There were a lot of concerns about parking and how to actually get through the square with cars um, especially accessing the schools around the square and um, how do parents do that. There was a um, comment about even if you do bicycle generally throughout the year, what happens during snow times when um, bicycling, you know, using a bicycle might not be possible. And um, the mixed space like on Bow Street and a little bit in the parking lot as well. Um, there was the safety concern, do cars and people really mix in a way that people feel comfortable? And then also considering traffic wise, if we create traffic jams and cars idle, that that is not a desired um, condition either. And with that, I'll hand it over to Luisa. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes. Can you hear me now? I was. We can hear you. Held, I was being held hostage by not being able to unmute. So here I am. Uh, well, we're last. So everything that we said already has been said. But there was also the same. I echo everything that um, the other group said. And the real discussion was about: Is this realistic? Is it um, actually doable? Everybody loved the pedestrianizing of the plaza, but had some very real concerns about um, the major route through the region and where would all the cars go and would it make it make the whole region worse. And then um, a couple of people did not have that concern, but there was also some conversation about keeping the two way Somerville Ave, but pedestrianizing Bow Street and a comment that we'd have to fully pedestrianize it because uh, partial cars going through probably wouldn't work. But then we also talked about the fact that if there's a two-way Somerville Ave, uh, you don't have to, it's not a necessity to go through Bow. So we had some really um, great conversations. I just wanna mention that the chat, the jam boards are still open. So if you wanna add some more comments, um, but I think people were happy to, to be thinking about the plaza in different ways. So our, our group was great. So with that, I think we're going to hand it over to Crystal B and Viola to talk about future community outreach. Hi, everyone. Thank you all so much um, for being here with us today. My name is Crystal B. I'm the Creative Civic Design Lead at Design Studio for Social Intervention. And I have the great honor of working with and supporting the community design team who are leading the community engagement effort around this project, the, the redesign of, of plaza space, of plaza and streetscapes in Union Square. Um, so overall, these are the goals of the community design team and the city and their community outreach efforts. 
Um, we want to make sure that we engage all users of Union Square. This is a joint effort between the engagement work of the community design team and the city of Somerville. And the CDT um, is, the community design team is especially um, aiming to include folks that have been traditionally left out of city planning processes. And um, the city of Somerville is um, also going to be engaging uh, with um, abutters and other stakeholders and Viola will be sharing more about that. But we're really hoping to engage neighbors, visitors, transit users, commuters, workers, and business owners, um, as many people as possible uh, to get their voices and opinions heard. Um, and another goal of the community design team in particular and the project um, outreach overall is to create in-person public making opportunities. Um, this is a way that we have found um, to have a uniquely inclusive process and the community design team has really been successful in uh, meeting people where they're at and already gathering. Um, and this means that we're not asking people to come to us, um, to come to a community meeting that we're, we're hosting. It means that we're, um, we're popping up at the, the plaza space, at Market Basket, at bus stops, or at youth group meetings. Um, and we're doing all these pop-ups in ways that are joyful, diverse, and also double as ways to inspire and share new ideas for the plaza and streetscape um, and for community members to give their feedback. And um, finally, uh, another goal of our community outreach and a function of the community design team is to design creative engagement tools. Uh, we are currently in this process of designing creative engagement tools uh, for our spring engagement. So we're really excited to share those with you. Um, and uh, we're, um, we're designing these tools to uh, really share the data from our first phase of engagement, which was in the summer and the fall and, um, and how it connects to the two plaza and streetscape design options. Um, also designing tools to gather feedback um, and gather the hopes and desires of community members and really make these design decisions real to people. So how would the, um, these designs really impact their, their daily lives? Go to the, the next slide. And again, the community design team's main goal is to, and main function is to engage traditionally left out residents um, in the redesign of Union Square's Plaza and Streetscape. Um, and so for that reason, we're going to be doing some pop-ups, meeting people where they're at. Um, in particular, we're, uh, or one of the groups that we're really hoping to engage is, um, is young people. So we're gonna be popping up on March 30th, that's our first uh, event. Um, and we're going to be doing that in collaboration with a, um, a Somerville High School youth group called D-Lab. Um, so we'll be there on March 30th. We'll also be popping up with Teen Empowerment at, um, at SCAT TV. Uh, we'll be popping up at bus stops at Minerau um, outside of the Argenziano School. And our final pop-up will be May 21st. It's a Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And um, we're really excited to invite you all, formally invite you all to that event. Um, and uh, there will be more information on how to sign up for our listserv or to get in touch. Um, so you can stay up to date about all of these upcoming engagement events. So thank you. I'm really excited to see you in the square. And I'll pass it over to Viola. Next slide, please. Um, we skipped one slide. Thank you. So as we just heard, um, the um, a large part of the breakout group discussions were around um, what happens to circulation, what happens to curb use, AE parking, loading and unloading. And um, we are planning over the next two months, and that will be city staff um, mostly to engage um, groups that are impacted by all these potential changes. 
and work with them to understand their needs, listen to their concerns and discuss and find out about everybody's ideas in smaller groups and with more time. And in particular, um, the staff will participate in the community design team events that Crystal just mentioned. We will have new materials there and share that with everybody. We will um, join the Union Square Main Streets meeting on April 28th. Uh, we are aiming to visit businesses and community organizations and um, conduct neighborhood events where, you know, some, especially some of these side streets that also came up in breakout discussions, um, their um, impacts on the, from the design. And um, again, as Crystal said, um, on our website, you will find out more. And if we can go to the next slide. So please um, continue to participate there um you can stay in touch um sign up for our listserv that is bit.ly dash union sq underscore email you can sign up there and you find out all the news and um you can visit our website to find out more information in general which is bit.ly slash union sq redesign and um, let us know if we missed anything, any, um, especially when it comes to outreach, if you think of organizations or groups that we should engage, you can reach us by email, either crystal at ds4si.org, or you can email transportation at, transportation at summerwellma.gov. And we really look forward to hearing from you. Um, we probably leave the jam boards up a little bit, um, but we'll close them at the end of the night, maybe in like, let's say in half an hour. So please feel free to put more stickers and more information on, and don't be shy to reach us on any of these venues and stay informed. And next slide, I'm going to give it to Courtney for the next steps. Yes, thank you, Viola. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so I think, uh, it's just this is a huge project and it is very challenging to understand the what's next um, in many capacities. So I just want to highlight so we're at community meeting number two. It's it's in bold um, and through April and May we as Crystal and Viola mentioned we'll be having all of these other forms of um, hearing from the community um, about the design possibilities for Union Square. And in June, we're going to close that portion of the feedback so we can digest what we heard and understand um, a possible direction forward for the big ideas. And those big ideas, uh, this consulting technical team will be doing some very preliminary drawings um, and be able to do some cost estimating um, so we can see if these big ideas work with our city budget um, and are able, are, are really reflecting the comments that we're hearing from the community um, before we move forward. Um, another component of that is that, you know, as I said, this is a big project. Um, it is very unrealistic for us to design everything to a construction level all at once. So we really see the whole area being broken up into different chunks. Um, and those chunks will be prioritized. Um, and I don't have a metric at the moment to say which, which part might go first. Um, there will be a lot of discussion around that. So, um, those are the pieces that uh, we are considering in this, what I'm calling phase one, that ends on September 30. And in 2024 or 2022, quarter four is what, where I realistically think that the phase two um, will kick off. And that might be, phase two might just be the plaza. It might be just Bow Street. It might be something else. Um, that's something that we'll have to work through. Next slide. So when you think about this phase two, that's sort of um, in the middle of the screen um, under 2023, really that component needs additional time to work through all the driveways, the loading, the this. Um, it would take 
um, time for us to zoom in to that one specific chunk of the whole Union Square um, to think about a potential construction project, which might be in 2024. Um, these are my best estimates on how this project would move forward as a whole. And then from 2024 all the way through 2030 is how we would plan to implement various phases <laughs> of the whole design area. So um, we, we definitely hear you all, all the people that live through the Somerville Ave, the Saucy Project, um, that construction, and all, all the, the private development going on, that there's a lot of construction fatigue. So I just want to reemphasize that like the, the, the things shown tonight, we're not building in six months. Um, it will be a couple of years from now before one small component of the whole thing would be would have the ability to go to construction. So um, this, the comments tonight, thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, we will hear, I'm sure we'll hear from you all um, in many more ways. And you can always reach out to um, myself and Viola, our emails. I'm at ckark at somervillema.gov. Avila's at v a u g u s t i n at somervillema.gov. Um, you can go to our Summer Voice page and our sign up for our listserv. And I'm going to hand it over to Louisa Oliveira. Thanks, Courtney. So I, I want to again thank you for spending your evening with us. Um, this is really important work that you're doing, and also for respecting that. There are many people who uh, would not feel comfortable coming to this forum or couldn't for a variety of different reasons, um, but that everyone uses public space, even the folks who don't come to public meetings. So that's an important thing that we are trying to capture in this, in this process. Um, we really value your feedback. We would like to, um, the presentation is finished. So you're, if you have to go, uh, you're um, not missing anything and this will be posted on the website. But we'd also like to open up till about 8.30 to see if there are any specific questions that we have missed. Um, and if there were people that didn't feel comfortable in the group that had, or had a question afterwards, if you wanted to ask it, you could um, put your, raise your hand, please. And then I think, um, Jeff, maybe we want to see each other. I can't see the quest. I can't see anybody raising hands. So someone has to call on people. Uh, well, not a question, but there is a comment in the chat from John Link. Uh, not a question, just want to say I'm excited about these ideas. Thank you for all your hard work. Thanks for coming, John. Thank you for your time. And the settings no are question. changed. If, if people want to unmute themselves and speak, you're welcome to do that. I just want to echo the comments. That, I just want to echo the comments that have been made. I, although very appreciative of the effort, I have to admit I'm extremely frustrated that we've had two public meetings, and we have a constant put off that we're in the early stages of this design. It's really hard to, as a business representative to want to collaborate with the city and the designers when we're just trying to bring up certain concerns. And I feel put off that, like, oh, we're it's still too early in the design phase to address those things. And then Courtney puts up a slide that says, by June, we're closing public comments. So, like, that's short and long term. It, that that that's a real difficult kind of concept to be pushed on us because I, I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure that this is inclusive of everyone you know it's because personally it's great to have all these people walking and biking in the square but if every business is shuttered because we can't operate you know it, it's going to look pretty ugly and I just don't want that to happen I, I really do hope that there's a, a way that we can find a way to 
collaborate and incorporate all of this to to make this a lively square and 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 not go in in other directions. So. Thank you, Joe. I do want to point out that we have been doing outreach for a year, so it hasn't been only two meetings, and that we did have a focus group with the East Somerville Main, Main Streets um, with the business community, and we've met with them recently and said we would be meeting with the business community uh, again um, to, to hear your concerns. So thank you for your but this time. Is an East, but Louisa, this is an East Somerville. This is Union Square. I, That's I'm, right. Yeah, I, I meant Union so, Square. Sorry. Right, but I've just heard from my breakout group when I asked some of these questions, it said we're still early in the design phase and I can't answer any of your questions. So I, I, I'm getting two messages, Louisa. That's all I'm so saying. The, and, and it's so very difficult to, to manifest those messages and be cooperative when I'm hearing what seem to be contradictory messages. So that's all. So to us, our, our message is, is very consistent, which is that we are looking for feedback on the direction in which we're going. And e all of the directions that we presented today are going to require a lot more digging in, a lot more understanding. And uh, that's, that's really what we are doing here tonight. And we're gonna continue to do that for the next two months. Any other questions? Well, can I just add to that? So the, the part that I said, phase two, I mean, that's, that's very, much undefined at this moment um and as i said this this current team will be helping us sort of evaluate a phasing plan or you know how to like sort of break up the large work area into smaller chunks so for example if if this team is is advising us that we should advance the plaza as part of phase two. Um, that's where in that phase two time period, we will be working very much directly with every business that abuts the plaza um, and working very closely through another set of community engagement for just the you know one targeted area. Um, if if the next if phase two is Bow Street, then, you know, we'd be having those same targeted conversations specifically around Bow Street. So these are just this, when I said, um, you know, public comment closes in June, um, that's just for this phase one, these big, bigger ideas, and we will be continuing to have more engagement in phase two. Um, it's just, I don't know, I can't give you I can't look into my crystal ball at this point and have the perfect answer for you, but we we do hear you, Joe, and um, we value the the comments from all the the businesses. You are all an important part of Union Square. Any other questions? Uh, I threw my hand up, so um, it's Tori. Um, just first of all, Joe, my heart goes out to you. I, um, I'm just, I'm feeling a lot of sympathy for you right now. And I, I was wondering, um, in terms of, in terms of phasing, now I'm going to back up in a second. Um, for example, for the Union Square Plaza, I'm trying to think who's developing that that area where the independent is and um, and you know the precinct that that area um, like it would just make sense to me to sort of develop these parcels. I mean our plazas and and the streetscape as the different parcels are being developed. Um, and I I don't know you know what ha have you had thought around that? And um, I don't think that the Plaza area is one of the one of the US two D parcels, um, but I guess I would sort of make a suggestion to think about how to um, kind of align those and and um, you know collaborating with developers as as they as they build on on certain parcels, um, especially with Bow Street, um, the D 
I don't know what that is, D6, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and also like in conversations with business owners, I'm not sure if, um, for example, like I think there's 600 parking spaces coming online in a couple of years with the D2 development. Um, like we might be gaining a lot more parking. And I just wanted to know if those conversations maybe have been had. And, and, and again, my heart goes out to Joe because it's like, what if, if we don't have all these wonderful businesses here, um, you know, how do we keep them sort of, how do we keep the square vibrant and, and functioning? And, and uh, yeah, um, that's all for now. I might just add, if that's, if that's true, I didn't know that. That would have been helpful. A lot of the comments in, in our breakout were about parking and uh, how the area continues to remove parking. And uh, if it's if that's the case that we're adding parking in a couple of years, it would have as, as someone who doesn't follow the local stuff all that closely, it would have been um, helpful if that was in the presentation because that would have I think alleviated um, a number of the concerns that that my breakout had as well. The other question I wanted to ask was, um, Louisa had you had mentioned a minute ago that the the goal of this was really to solicit feedback, so. Um, is, I guess I wanted to ask, like, is the plan still that one of these two proposals or something similar to it is is going to move forward? Like that that was sort of the vibe that I got from the last five minutes of discussion. And I just wanted to contrast that with the feedback that I heard, at least from my breakout and the summary of everybody else's feedback, which seemed to be fairly unanimously negative towards both of these proposals, um, mainly due to um, at least our perceived um, lack of understanding about what would happen to the veh vehicular traffic. So I, I, I wanted to ask that, like, is, is the city, city still moving forward with one of these two? Is that still the plan? Or is that going to be kind of, um, is that kind of the next step is to discuss that? So there, there really were, we were really presenting four different options. So two for each focus area on the plaza and on the Bow Street, and they're kind of a mix and match. And then there was a third decision or direction point, which was the parking lot. Um, so for the next two months, we will be continuing our outreach so that we hear the voices that are here, but also the voices again that don't feel comfortable coming to a, a public meeting. And then, um, there will be a larger a scheme developed from that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I also want to emphasize that the majority of the information we, you know, that everybody asks for about parking and what the impact on all the multimodal circulation is, that is what we are also introducing over the next two months in smaller groups with more time is it takes a lot of time to absorb it all. And, and in a public meeting like this, it was hard for us to combine the plaza design and ideas and the larger Bow Street one with all the impacts on everything we discussed. So um, it, it, yeah, so you, you will find out more, um, everybody, the businesses, the neighbors that are clearly impacted by whatever decision is being made. Julie so, Engel, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to know, is there going to be an official traffic study done relating to both of these designs prior to picking one? So and our consultant- official, I mean, I'm sorry, outside of Somerville, someone uh, non-biased in any way. So our consultants have already done a lot of analysis and um, and I think once we move forward and get an understanding, we um, will continue to prove the concepts and that, you know, it's not the city generally that does it, but consultants who will do the traffic analysis. So that will happen before a decision is made or it won't, I'm sorry. I'm yes, we will, we, we will check our decisions, especially when it comes to vehicular movement and make sure that, that it's based on sound traffic analysis. Thank you. 
Great. Well, it's 8.32. Um, I want to thank you all again for participating and um, for giving your really helpful and thoughtful comments. Again, there's a number of events that are happening and you can always reach out to us directly if you'd like to speak to us. Please do uh, watch for the focus groups that are coming and the public events. Please do come out to the square as the weather gets nicer and participate in those events. I think that's a, um, a great place to see how the public space is used, to see who's in the public space, uh, and to really um, envision what we are talking about tonight. So I want to thank you all for coming, and um, I wish you a good evening. Remember also this is all on Summer Voice, um, and there's a number of different ways to get in touch with us. So thank you. Thank you.